So we just did a non-destructive overlay layer right there. On normal mode, it would look like this. On our creature. Now we can tr treat the whole setting that way, right? So that's a little bit easier to set up. You know, I'm gonna when the tools get really small, you can click on the browser bar and then use Command plus and minus to enlarge the tools within Photopea or shrink them down. It's like the difference between zooming in on the website itself versus zooming in on your image. And then when you click on your image and click Command minus or Command plus, it will zoom in on that. Remember, Command zero will always fill the frame with it. Okay, so now to do what's called a full non-destructive overlay layer, not a creature one. We go to our top layer. I'm going to delete this. I don't need it. And we're going to build a new layer using that little post-it. Then we're going to go to Edit, Fill, and we're going to fill the foreground, or we're going to fill it with middle gray, just gray, normal, 100%. A layer on top, we just fill it with, with gray, this is on our proving on our landscape with our creature. Okay, now we just set that gray layer to overlay mode. And if we did it right, you can turn it off and on and it looks like nothing happened. But that is the layer on which we can dodge and burn everything. So I have light coming from the top, so it should make sense that I can use my dodge tool, really large, really soft, at an exposure of less than 20. Remember, each time you open Photopea, you're going to have to reset these settings. But then while you're using it, it will remember. And the maximum Photopea will let you do is a thousand pixel brush for this. But I can just brush the background a little bit to get some light in the sky. And then what does this look like? If I set it to normal, I'm just lightening the gray with this soft dodge. And that's going to lighten everything beneath it when I hit it, put it on overlay mode. So without it, it looks like this. With it, it looks like this. Now this is overlapping my creature and, and the landscape. So if I want to dodge the tree a little bit behind my creature, I want to dodge the leaves in front of my creature, if I want to dodge my creature a little bit, I can't. Dodge is to lighten. And these are terms from the, the wet lab of a dark room. When you're um, working on photographs and exposing them, to dodge means you actually bend the enlarger light away from the exposure or the, the print. <laughs> because in photography, the more light hits the paper, the darker it gets. And that's why it looks like a little black lollipop or solid lollipop, they actually use tools like that to block light from certain parts of the exposure. And then underneath that is burn, which looks like a hand kind of cupping the light, because that's the trick in the enlarger. If you bend the light into certain areas, you can get it to, to burn and darken uh, some areas more than others. So same thing, I want to use the exposure less than 20, pressure sensitive, with my tablet, large brush, low hardness. This is on the whole landscape, overlay mode. Where do I want darker? Well, I want a shadow underneath my creature, especially where it's touching, like on the leaves, like behind it to showcase it. But this is only going to darken the midtones, right? It's not going to darken those brightest highlights. If I get really distracted by those brightest highlights, like on that mushroom, and I want them to be taken down, I need to go to that layer directly. So I'm going to turn on Auto Select Layer. I have to turn off my overlay layers. There we go. And then I can actually burn not just the midtones like I can in non-destructive ones, but just burn the highlights just a little bit. But you notice that's taking the color away almost immediately. 
So that's destructive dodging and burning. Does that. But then I can always go back with the sponge tool and saturate it if I need to. It's just a pain. So just the differences in tools. But I just want a little bit of color, not too much, to be put back. Okay, next. At this stage, I find it helpful to collapse everything that is behind my creature by merging them. So I've got a lot of different layers, including some I can just delete. So I'm going to select them all that are underneath my creature. See all of those? And now I'm just going to say layer, merge layers. Shortcut is command E. This is asking a lot of photo people. It's going to save a lot of memory. So now all of that is just on one layer behind my creature. Then I have my smart object creature on top of that, which I turn off. Then I have my duplicate of my smart object creature. And then I have my non-destructive creature layer, <laughs> which has the lighting on my creature. And then I have any elements that are, inter are internally composited or from my landscape that are in front of my creature. In, this, in my case, it's this cabbage blossom. And then I have the overall dodge and burn of the landscape on top of it all. You can use as many of these non-destructive layers as you like, but the benefit of merging everything, and I'll do it on a duplicate, is now I can take that merged background layer, and just like I did on my creature when I brought it in, I can put direct adjustments on it. I can go through levels. And if those highlights seem a little bright, maybe I limit the highlights in the background. Or if it all needs to be a little bit brighter, I can make it a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. Or just see. This is about highlighting your creature. Or I can limit the shadows. I wouldn't usually recommend doing too many alterations, but just slight pushes. Now my favorite direct adjustment is color balance. And this is going to be now on the background to help it match my character. So I'm going to start with the midtones. And I can decide, does it need to go more green or more red? It seems like a little bit more red is helpful. Just a touch. More blue in the midtones or more yellow, maybe just a tad more blue. More magenta or more green. This is the background. Maybe a little bit more magenta. Now the highlights. More red or more cyan? I'm actually going to do a little bit more cyan, which is unusual for me. More blue or more yellow? I think there's plenty of yellow, so I'm going to go a little bit more blue in the highlights. More green, more magenta. I'm going to do a little bit more magenta. And you can't really tell until you play with it. Shadows. More cyan. More red. I'm going to do a touch of red. More green, more magenta. Pretty good where it is, but right there. More blue or more yellow? I don't think I, well, there's so much yellow. So this is just in the shadows, and I feel like I need a little bit of that yellow in the shadows in the foreground. So there we go. And if you want to see what that did, remember I did it on a duplicate. So a levels and color balance can, can make shifts that are helpful. All right, now we've matched the lighting, we've matched the angle of the character. We've kind of treated our edges, we've dodged and burned, we've done non-destructive stuff. What's left? Atmosphere. This is kind of the magic formula for compositing. So I'm going to hit Command S, I'm going to save it. It saves back to where I am. You're going to see that that green dot goes away. Then I put it back, so I'm reminded that I'm always saving it to the right place. 
And now I'm going to show you what's called a texture. So this is a vegetable jungle, you know, and it's got like a mushroom lake. And what I have here are a lot of very sharp layer elements and not a lot of atmosphere, not a lot of kind of fog or mist to help with these transitions. In fact, some of these transitions are so sharp, like my leaf there, that I actually want to feather them a little bit. I'll do a four pixel feather and I'm going to cut this leaf out. from that foreground on the wrong layer though. There we go. And then maybe here. So we're really looking at our transitions, right? We got this strong leaf here. That's fine. But then I want to kind of shape this one. That feather helps. And I can dodge and burn that directly. You just have control of every single pixel. Burn that leaf back a little bit. Maybe dodge this one forward. What catches light, what doesn't. Yeah, it was fine. So give it a lot of dimensionality. And I can do that on the non-destructive layer, or I can do it when I need like real touch-ups to do it on the layer itself. But here I'm just burning, getting a little bit more shadow and dimension to this foreground. vignetting the bottom by darkening it with my overlay layer. So this cabbage leaf looks huge and coming out towards the viewer. Yeah. And then, because I had to kind of cut it off arbitrarily, I can use dodge to make it look like that's the natural edge of it. So when you have control of every pixel, there's a lot you can do. Okay, next, texture overlays. I have to think what kind of air quality would there be? This is a way of thinking about your environment. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Google image search. Not Pixabay, just Google. And I'm just going to look for texture overlays so you understand what these are. These are things that designers create. We look under images. They used to give them away for free, but then a whole capitalistic market came up around them. So you'll see them mostly from different pay sites, but some free sites as well. Uh, deviant art often has a lot, and those you can use without watermarks, like this one, for instance. But you can also put descriptors in, because texture overlays are for everything. And what I want is a texture overlay that is for a misty kind of jungle. So I'm going to say misty. Mist and fog. Here's a nice one. Basically, they're just clouds, but it's got that stupid uh, watermark in it, right? But here's a site called FreePick. That one's tiny. Tiny isn't actually bad for this. And of course, FreePick has, <laughs> has things. But let's say I even use this one. It's only 284 pixels. But what you'll notice about texture overlays is that they're always in grayscale. And so I'm going to show you how to use those next. So I can grab a few. Uh, 